Officials are projecting the number of Americans receiving food stamps will soon reach a record 28 million. The number of food stamp recipients is quickly rising across the country. 40 states report an increase in food stamp recipients last year. The biggest increases in Arizona, Florida, Maryland, Nevada, North Dakota, and Rhode Island. In West Virginia, one in six residents now receive food stamps. This comes as the price of food is soaring. Over the past year, the price of milk in the U.S. has risen 17 percent. Rice, pasta, bread prices have jumped over 12 percent, and the price of eggs has written, risen by 25 percent. It's the highest grocery inflation since the early 90s. Jim Wild joins us now from Washington, D.C., president of Food Research and Action Center, known as FRAC, a national anti-hunger public policy group. What's happening, Jim? Well, two things are happening. Uh, one, uh, people are losing jobs, they're losing hours of work, their wages are going down, so they need more assistance from the government in the form of food stamps and other help. And two, food prices are rising faster than they have in many years, and they're particularly rising for staples that low-income people buy. The government's uh, cost of uh, uh, living index for the Thrifty Food Plan, which is the cheapest food plan the government has, has risen uh, one and a quarter percent faster over the last year than the rapidly rising price of food generally. So the poor are facing a double whammy. Last week at an anti-hunger summit in Massachusetts, Governor Patrick uh, compared it to Katrina and its effect on low-income families in this country. I just learned about a new field of journalism. I was down speaking at Washington and Lee this past weekend in uh, Lexington, uh, Virginia. And there was a special meeting of the Society of Professional Journalists there, and one of the seminars was on poverty journalism how to cover uh, poverty in this country. They're talking particularly about places like West Virginia. West Virginia, one in six people there are on food stamps. In Ohio, one in ten. Right. And uh, according to the Oklahoma Department of Human Services, one in three children in Oklahoma has been on food stamps, at least at some point during the last year. Often people aren't on for the entire year, but two, three, or four months. One in three children in Oklahoma. One in three kids? That's right. Can you talk about how food stamps work? Sure. Uh, food stamps are primarily paid for by the federal government, but you apply through a state food stamp or welfare agency. It's an entitlement program, so the good news is that as economic conditions can get worse, the program can grow to meet the needs of the additional families that fall into poverty or near poverty. You have to meet a very strict asset test and a very strict income test. Those tests, in some ways, are much too strict haven't been changed in 30 years for inflation on the asset side. But once you're eligible, and we're now approaching 28 million people who are eligible in this country or who are receiving benefits, there are far more who are eligible but not receiving it. Once you get benefits, uh, benefits average about $100 a month uh, per person in a family. Uh, those benefits are too small. Uh, everybody agrees that they're too small, and there's legislation pending in Congress to improve them a little bit, not a enough in the nutrition title of the Farm Bill. One of the important things Congress has to do this month is get that nutrition title, that Farm Bill, passed. And what exactly does the Farm Bill say? It improves benefits a little bit uh, by changing the so-called standard deduction, which is part of how you compute benefits and, and improving the minimum benefit that hasn't gone up in a long time. And it, it makes eligibility a little easier for working families and other fa low-income working families and others to get into the program. Uh, so it's a big program, and it costs money to, to fix uh, the problems with it. Uh, and the president's threatened to veto the bill because of uh, the possibility of spending more money on the farm bill. But we really need to do this now. What is the second stimulus package you're calling for, Jim Wall? Uh, well, in the first stimulus package, which did some uh, good things, it provided the tax rebate, uh, including to families uh, with very low or little or no tax liability, it provides them a rebate. Uh, if they have earnings. Uh, the first rebate package did some good things, but it didn't have any improvements in unemployment compensation, and it didn't have any boost in food stamps, even though the economists and uh, leaders on the Hill uh, and um, uh, former Treasury Secretary Rubin and Republican economists like Martin Feldstein and Ben Bernanke all said that the two best ways to stimulate the, econ the economy, to move money into the economy quickly and to do good 
for people who are hurting the most would be to boost food stamp benefits on a temporary basis and to improve unemployment insurance coverage. So there is a second stimulus package probably moving through Congress in the next few weeks, and the two most fundamental things that has to do is tackle food stamps and unemployment compensation. Um, and the purchasing power of food stamps, um, what is the average, something like a dollar or a dollar right. seven per person the, per meal? The average benefit is, benefit is about a dollar per meal uh, per person in the family, which is not enough. Um, it's not enough to stave off hunger, and certainly not enough to buy a healthy diet. One of the things to think about when we have these inadequate benefits in the food stamp program, which mostly goes to kids, is we're not getting kids enough healthy foods so that they can do well in school, so that they can develop, so they can stay healthy, so they can learn. So it's really self-defeating to have benefit levels that are that low. What's causing the rise in food prices? Oh, a variety of factors. Uh, d uh, more demand for uh, food from overseas, uh, India and China, as more people move into the middle class. Uh, competition for crops from uh, uh, biofuels. Uh, corn is a lot of corn is being bought off, uh, bought up for um, uh, for use as fuel. Um, and, and those are the two main factors people have pointed to. Uh, well, Jim Weil, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Uh, Jim is president of the Food Research and Action Center, known as FRAC, a national anti-hunger public policy group based in Washington, D.C. It will certainly link to your website. And that does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Berkshire, for the producer, Aramata, Angeli Kama, Jeffrey Hagerman, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Hani Massoud, Robbie Karen, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, and Peter Curries, our engineers. Special thanks also to Becca Staley, Samantha Chambly, Jason Noor, John Randolph, Jose Miranda, Kieran Krug Meadows, Vesta Godars. Um, next week, we begin our Standing Up to the Madness road tour around the country. Uh, my book that I wrote with my brother, journalist David Goodman, is coming out then, and we'll be celebrating indie media all over this country. We'll begin in New Orleans on April 10th, and then head to Seattle on April 13th, to Portland, Oregon on April 14th, to Oakland, San Francisco, Sebastopol, Houston, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, Taos, Alamosa, Salida, Colorado Springs, Denver, Boulder, Salt Lake City, Washington, D.C., Montclair, New Jersey, New York, Los Angeles. Check our website, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.